I have a driver's license and a car and most of the traveling I do is for long periods of time on my own. So I spend a lot of time without anything to think about but the environment that I'm sitting in. Have you ever thought about what would happen if cars became invisible? It would just be loads of people sitting like this in sync, moving. And it's such a strange concept, but technology has made that normal to us. Often I'm driving for hours and hundreds of miles with the same people around me. And you form a little pack. Me and my little blue polo and that 40 something in his Porsche taking on the streets of Britain together. He's probably completely oblivious to this, but I think of it as a really special bond. Um, and it makes me sad when I find out our destinations aren't the same and we leave each other's lives forever. The status quo in this society is to not communicate with people you don't know. Even me yesterday to you said that you shouldn't talk to or make eye contact with people in London. And that's just because society has made it that way. We're not supposed to. It's considered weird if we talk to people we don't know. It holds us back all the time from interacting with people. How many times have you heard somebody ask a question and you know the answer but you have to hold your tongue because it's not appropriate for you to say so? When we go out into the world, we don't treat people as humans anymore. We treat them as this anonymous mass. There's a norm of how things are supposed to function when you ask for the bill in a restaurant or buy something over the counter. You exchange money for goods and services and that's the end. I was in a bookshop on Saturday. It was just me and the guy at the till and I was browsing for about 15 minutes trying to justify buying books. Eventually I found something that I could justify buying and I took them to the till. I expected the usual interaction you get upon buying things. You know, pay by card, here's your receipt. Instead what happened was that one of the books I was buying was a the third volume of a novel. And he asked me whether I knew that because someone earlier in the week had bought it and not realised. And I got to say, yeah, I know, I have the first two. Um, and this is like encouraging me to read them because I read some of the author's other work and I really liked it. And he was like, really, which books? And we proceeded to have a really interesting discussion about something we were both passionate about. It's such a shame that we need those sort of excuses to break the barrier into conversation with people we don't know. Because it means that you're not going to interact with so many people that you could have really strong connections with and we're completely blind to. I think in the world that we live in we do so much more observing and consuming than we do interacting. And this system doesn't help that. For every 50 views I probably get one comment. You're sitting there at home not interacting with me. And it's such a shame because we could get on like a house on fire or we could inspire like hateful passion within each other. I'm trying to encourage you to interact with people if you want to. If you're sitting on the bus next to somebody that's reading a book you just read, talk to them about it because you'll both come off better for it. And you're watching a YouTube video? Leave a fucking comment. Tell me about a great spontaneous interaction you've had with somebody or tell me anything, you know? Two-way efforts are what makes life worth living. Attempting to run for the bus or the tube is valiant even when unsuccessful. I've spent less time on this and more time doing productive stuff.